Parts replaced, gas cap twice, fuel filler neck twice, evap canister three times, gas tank, air filter box, MAF sensor twice, purge valve three times, everyone good morning welcome back to Pine Hollow out of diagnostics today we have this 2010 Toyota Can uh, Corolla um, 102,000 miles customer brought it from about five hours away because no one has been able to fix this check engine light car drives fine he's getting codes for the evap system so this thing he said he's been dealing with this problem for two years and he's just ready to throw this thing off a cliff. So what's the what's the history? He bought it from a small dealer. Check engine light came on. It was under warranty. Took it back. They replaced some parts. Just either made it worse. He got fed up with that. Tried other shops. Tried to fix it himself. No luck. What parts were replaced? So he said he replaced the evap canister three times OEM, didn't fix it. Under the hood, purge valve, obviously. Now this is a aftermarket AutoZone replacement. He has the original in the trunk. Replaced the intake manifold gasket, replaced the mass airflow sensor. He put the original one back in because he said the aftermarket one didn't work at all. The engine computer is from flagship one. There's the original engine computer. The entire wiring harness is replaced. Wow. And the two codes in the car are P0441 EVAP system incorrect purge flow and EVAP system leak detected large leak. So you'd say, how hard can this be to diagnose? Well, this generation Toyota Unfortunately, they made the EVAP system much more complicated than the you know 1990s and early 2000s where they weren't the easiest to diagnose, but at least you could usually fix them, no parts required. This thing, well, we'll see. So let's read up some service info, get um, some information on these trouble codes, and see how the system is laid out, how it works, and what checks we want to do first. Well, actually, the parts canon list here is actually it's pretty impressive. So 2010, Toyota Corolla, description of problem, P0441, P0455. Parts replaced, gas cap twice, fuel filler neck twice, evap canister three times, gas tank, air filter box, MAF sensor twice, purge valve three times, intake manifold gasket, PCV valve, couple of vacuum hoses, engine harness, because we found that someone before I purchased the car had rigged the wiring, so apparently this car was sold because of this issue. The ECM, um, reman from flagship one, the ECM corrected the purge valve because there was no ground and it would stay stuck open all the time. Now with the new ECM, it apparently is working properly and clicking instead of sucking constant vacuum. Throttle body was cleaned, spark plugs replaced, ground wires cleaned for better body ground. We got the car 99,000 miles, not only has 102,000 miles, so you, you can he could only drive it for 3,000 miles in two years. That's all I remember. Been to four different mechanics. I actually went to Toyota, and I'm still with the problem. Wiring harness and ECM I did myself. I actually work basic stuff on cars, but my knowledge has reached a limit. No amount of YouTube can help me now. <laughs> so once we make this video, maybe uh, it'll help someone else. Uh, that's where I found you. I'm probably missing a step or something, but I have a feeling that it will be something that will make me feel stupid, LOL. So that's the backstory. Sounds really fun. Let's look up some OEM service info. So on all data, we have a very good information on this EVAP system. So related DTCs, we have the 441 and the 455. Gross leak. Incorrect purge flow is the 441. Now, this is interesting. There is a chart. If any EVAP system DTCs are set, the malfunction area can be determined using the table below. So if we go on 441 and 455 and see which 
um, line has both of those, well, there's purge VSV stuck open. You know, that could cause it. Gross leak. That could definitely cause it if there's an actual leak in the system. And that's about it. So, purge or an actual leak. Interesting. Here's the description of the system. Like I said, it's more complicated than the older systems, as everything is these days. There is the purge valve under the hood. And then, here's the fuel tank. And there's this canister that includes a canister pump module pressure sensor, leak detection pump, and vent valve. So it's a smart EVAP module with the canister built in with the, um, you know, this leak detection pump. There's this, you know, soak timer. It's a canister pump module. Where is the actual pressure sensor? Turning on the vent valve does not seal off the EVAP system. To check for leaks in the EVAP system, disconnect the air inlet vent hose and apply pressure from the atmospheric side of the canister. Huh. Interesting. So you don't put the smoke machine where the purge is and go that way because apparently whatever vent valve you can close bidirectionally that will not close off the system. We'll keep that in mind. So there are two monitors to confirm the appropriate EVAP system operation. There's a key off monitor. So this one checks for system leaks, cancer pump module malfunctions. Monitor starts five hours after the ignition switch is turned off. At least five hours are required for the fuel to cool down to stabilize the EVAP pressure. So that's a, that's a pain for testing. Leak detection pump creates a negative pressure vacuum in the EVAP system and the pressure is measured. Finally, the ECM monitors for leaks in the EVAP system and malfunctions in both the canister pump module and the purge VSV based on the EVAP pressure. Okay, purge flow monitor. Purge flow monitor consists of two monitors. The first monitor is conducted every time and the second monitor is activated as, if necessary. So first monitor, while engine is running, purge VSV is on, the ECM monitors the purge flow by measuring the EVAP pressure change. If negative pressure is not created, the ECM begins the second monitor. Second monitor, the vent valve is turned on, closed, and the EVAP pressure is measured. If the variation in the pressure is less than a certain value, ECM interprets this as a purge VSV being stuck closed, illuminates the mill, and sets the P0441 to trip detection logic. Okay. There we go. ECM. Canister pump module. So all the information's here. Canister pressure sensor is right there, I guess, on either built into this canister or whatever. There's leak detection pump. Okay. Reference orifice. Vacuum produced through orifice by closing purge VSV, turning off vent valve, and operating leak detection pump to monitor reference pressure. It's a small leak of EVAP. Okay. Airflow condition leak check, condition purge flow. Very, very good information to have. Pressure sensor specification. So. Your standard atmosphere. I guess you can go above or below atmosphere here. So this is the usable range. Without smart key system. Soak timer, power source, main relay control. See that's the ECM wiring diagram. So here's the canister pump module. There's the leak detection pump. Energized right by the you know by the ECM canister pressure sensor vent valve again ground site switched by the ECM okay inspection procedure 
all this stuff. So all the information's there. Let's uh, get some preliminary data on this car with uh, with a scan tool. And make sure that you know that we can see the pressure reading. Uh, quickest check here is to actually pop off the hose off the purge valve, run the car, measure the vacuum there with the purge, you know, um, off, and bidirectionally command it and see if the vacuum shoots up. See if that purge valve seals and does what it should. All right, so first quick check I want to do is on this purge valve. So instead of using engine vacuum, I just have a little vacuum pump. And if the solenoid is closed, we should be able to build vacuum and hold vacuum indefinitely. Now with the scanner, if I bidirectionally control it, I'll hit on. Seems to work. Do it again. Okay. Um, we can plug in the original Toyota part and repeat this same experiment. So I have the original purge valve plugged in, same experiment. Seems to hold just fine and on. Okay, so they both seem to work, so it seems like our purge valve is not the issue. All right, so now we're activating the vent valve in that fancy canister, so on. You can hear it. Okay, so at least that is active and seems to move. Activate the vacuum pump. Let's try that. Okay, great. So we do have bidirectional controls. And that's it for the EVAP system. Now, there is this function for EVAP system check and we can read about that in the service info see if we can just run that I think it, the check says it takes 18 minutes um, with the car off so that could lead us in the right direction so we try that so next easiest check for this uh, gross leak this vehicle's EVAP system turning the vent valve does not seal off the EVAP system. To check for leaks in the EVAP system, disconnect the air inlet vent hose and apply pressure from the atmospheric side of the canister. So, there's the canister, there's a canister filter, so if you disconnect it right here and pressurize it this way, then the whole system should fill you know, with pressure from the smoke machine. If there are any leaks, we should be able to determine that without anything too fancy. So the purge is closed. You know, the gas cap is closed. This will check all the lines, all the connections, and the fuel tank all in one go. So let's disconnect that here and hook up the smoke machine. All right, here's the setup. Smoke machine hooked up. Right to the canister vent hose which I unplug here, it goes through this little filter. Everything's brand new. So let's see if there are any leaks. The ball is dropping. Brand new fuel tank. I don't see any smoke yet. Ball's basically dropped to zero. And let's see here. If we take this off, we should see there's smoke coming out of there. Yep. So our purge is definitely closed. Which 
gonna wait for this to drop. Alright, well, there you go. No leaks. Confirmed. Purge valve, I put the original one on. That's tight. Where would you go from here? Obviously, this is not going to be an easy diagnosis since this problem's been here ever since the guy bought it and he's replaced all the components. <laughs> and and uh, I don't know what. I guess we'll go back to the service info. There are some scanner, the bi directional active tests we can do for the system to check itself. You know, it's one thing to do it with a smoke machine or a vacuum pump, but we want the system to be able to check itself and see what the pressure does inside the EVAP system. So my next check, what I want to do is bidirectionally enable this leak detection pump and just let it run. Now, if the vent solenoid is off, obviously we'll have, you know, it should stay close to the atmosphere because the air would be coming back into the canister and it would just be sucking on this little reference orifice 0 0.02 inch. Now, if we plug off this port, eventually, you know, would the pump do anything? It has to exhaust the air, you know, if the, basically if the vent valve is here, it would vacuum this out and exhaust it back on uh, towards the filter side. So we need to do both bidirectionally at the same time, vent valve off and leak detection pump on. Uh, so I think there might be a bidirectional check to do both of those things at once. Okay, so EVAP system check automatic mode. EVAP system check automatic mode consists of five steps performed automatically by the tech stream. It takes approximately 18 minutes. Do not perform the EVAP system check when the tank is more than 90% full. Uh, we're less than half a tank. Do not run the engine during this operation. When the temperature of the fuel, okay, so fuel is nice and cool. Clear DTCs. Enter the following menus. If, after it's completed, it'll, you know, throw any pending DTCs. Then manual mode is you can do this using text stream do not perform da, da, da. do not run the engine during this operation so there's evap system check auto mode or manual mode so in manual mode it basically does this so the vent valve is venting, the leak detection pump turns on, and you get this first reference pressure. Then the vent valve turns on and it you know starts evacuating the system. If there's no leak, we should see this. If there is a leak or a gross leak, the Pressure just just be atmosphere. Okay, let's uh, let's try this. If we can monitor the pressure during this manual mode check, that would be great. All right, here we go. Evap system check. So I'm not sure if it'll let us in with the DTCs. All right, here we go. There's a little warning. Okay. Press next to move the following step. You can the key off. Gauge pressure should be used to diagnose the system. Okay. Park. Engines off. Can only be executed once every key cycle. Okay. So there is only manual mode. Okay. Initializing test. Okay, pretty cool. So we do have our vapor pressure and absolute vapor pressure, vent valve, vacuum pump, and purge. Perfect. So step one, atmospheric pressure check.
step two, 0 0.02 inch pressure check. So the pump is on right now, and it's drawing vacuum through that little orifice. That's your reference pressure, po minus 0.4 psi, okay? Leak check. So now, the whole tank should be evacuated. Let's see if that happens. So our purge is off, vent valve is on, or closed, and vacuum pump is on. So this sucker should drop to, you know, whatever its cutoff is. But we'll, we'll see how far it drops. By the way, that leak detection pump is exhausting through a little hose here. Pressure is slowly dropping. All right, this leak detection pump is pretty weak sauce. We're only down 0.6 psi. It seems to have stabilized there, so that either means we have a leak or a weak pump. 0.6. So let's do leak check. Vacuum release. Okay. So that's it. Complete. Uh, <laughs> well, I don't know what to say here. Hmm. Maybe we could just manually vacuum the system and see if that holds. This leak detection pump just takes forever to pump the system down. Hmm. So with the engine running now, I have my vacuum gauge connected to perch solenoid. So when we command it on, you should not see any vacuum right now. When I turn it on with a scanner, you should see engine vacuum, and we do. Turn it off. Make sure engine vacuum does not build when the solenoid is off. Seems to be perfect. Now with the purge line hooked up, I'm going to turn it on and see what happens to the tank pressure sensor. So no change at all on those numbers. But what if we plug the vent and do the same experiment? So I plugged off the vent to the canister. Turn it on. You do see a decrease. Okay, now will this stabilize? See how long this takes. Right now it's 3.05 p.m. It 
see how long it takes to get back up to like 14.2 psi all right so pressure is holding rock steady there are no leaks in the system and the purge valve is fine so what could be the problem I'm gonna let the gas cap go and that should go right back up to 14 okay perfect next step clear the codes out Let's see read fault codes clear fault memory we're gonna do that manual check again no DTC's and during the manual check of the evap system if there's a problem it should set it right away all right here we go So this is that orifice, kind of a calibration check, that's the first step. Now it should pump down the system to less than that calibrated number. And this could take up to 15 minutes. So once we get below 13.7, or we'll go to 13.5, we'll do that leak check step and see if any DTC is set. All right, so the leak detection pump has been running for about 10 minutes. We're stable at 13.4 PSI, so minus 0.6 from the first reference. So I'm writing these down. We started at 14.1. The reference uh, when the LDP was on and the vent was open, 13.7, that's the uh, vacuum through the orifice. Now we're at 13.4, let's see, 13.41. So basically we're doing this check. Step one is uh, atmosphere. Step two is just the pump running with the vent open. Step three, this is the long you know 10 to 15 minutes it should stabilize step 4 will be open to purge then close the purge within 10 seconds right there 10 seconds and then the pressure should stabilize right here so higher than the initial 13.4 you know, so let's do that for 10 seconds one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now the vacuum pump is on, vent valve is off, and we should see this pressure should decay rapidly to the second reference pressure so it should be lower than this line but higher than the initial line so are we decreasing in pressure yet I'm going to have to repeat this. No trouble code set right here.